So if anybody will tell me that I encounter a place where I've actually found too much to do, I would probably say that's, you know, that's almost impossible. How can you find too much to do in a game? Well, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the game that there is too much to do. And it gets to a point where you actually can get artificial. So I've been playing this game for a while while taking a break from the Division 2. And I did not play Assassin's Creed Origins. In fact, I, I started playing uh, Odyssey. Then I took Origins and said, let me just fire it up because I got two of them on a sale on Epic Games. And as I fired up Origins, I was like, oh, they're both basically similar games with a few things kind of taken away. Perhaps the story in Origins is actually good. But I was already enjoying the story in Odyssey. And I said, you know what? Let me just focus on Odyssey and put in enough time. I was you know, aiming to put in 30 hours. That's usually, in my opinion, when a campaign for a game should at least end in many cases. But little did I know that this game was going to take the Witcher form of game structure, uh, other than the nasty smelling microtransactions, which I'm going to discuss here in a little bit, and put it all in an Ubisoft open world game. I mean, when you put something of that nature in an Ubisoft open world game, you've just increased the mountain because Ubisoft does not hold back with their open world. They will literally design, you know, some of the most intricate things that you will see in an open world, they would design a, a, a sea that you can keep swimming if you can, or a big old ocean that you have to sail through and sail past to get to where you can actually create a fast travel point and then eventually fast travel. They do not care. That's one good thing they do about their games. The detail of the open worlds that they design is no joke to the point that, you know, people have looked at their games as models for specific real life structures because of the way they try to do and recreate those scenes as best as possible. But I finally, you know, dumped in my you know, 40 hours. I think I'm 41 hours and 42 hours in. By the time you get this video, maybe it would have increased even. And I've been farming XP. I think I finally hit level 30. I'm still about 20 levels away from 50, which is end game. But I think at level 20 something, XP gains start to get better and you start leveling up faster. That's what I noticed with the game. And there's so many intricate things to do. The way you traverse the world is through horseback riding. You can climb almost anything, if not everything. You can play the game in almost however fashion or order you want to. It is very, very, very open-ended. And at the same time, I think they put a mountain of a task for players to be able to engage in. This is something that is, um, in a sense, kind of uh, unique. Because as much as people may say all these open-world games are generic... Well, go count how many of them are actually done and done well. I think Odyssey was done well. I think they did a good job providing a game that can last the player for 60 hours in just base game. If they really wanted to play, it could last more than that. And then the, uh, the DLC, I don't really know how long it's going to take. But coming from a game where, another Ubisoft game anyways, where we farm gear, we do numbers, we do stats... I've just been grinding this game in the wrong way, trying to get to end game so I can get all the best gear and stuff. When in reality, you're supposed to be getting, if, if possible, the very best gear as you're starting off the, you know, in making progress and you can upgrade your gear as you go. So I guess that's my noobishness that came to play into this game. But nonetheless, even with the approach that I took, it still shows that the game allows for you to take whichever approach that you want. And still, I've been able to have fun while doing it, taking out targets, doing all kinds of side quests, in some cases, fetch quests. The game is so questy. Sometimes you're even running errands for your mom, like literally the, you will run errands for your mother in that game. I mean, I'm not joking. I'm not making this stuff up. And I think they wrote the story very well. And there are a few, you know, things that I want to discuss with it. So over the course of the marketing for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it's been really interesting to see how Ubisoft has actually put this game, you know, in, in, in their purview. They're going to be making Assassin's Creed games unapologetically. I think they'll be making much more down the road. And the one thing I have a problem with this game about is not the, the length. The length can be a chore in some cases. I think it's the time savers that they put in there. I think that's just a mess. Uh, Warner Brothers games removed time savers from Middle Earth Shadow of War because they quickly figured out that it wasn't profitable as they would have thought. Such a great game that Assassin's Creed Odyssey could have been, I think was just marred by something like that. I think Ubisoft has basically guaranteed a good number of their player base to reach into the discount bin to pick up very good games that they make because they continue the short-sighted uh, microtransaction infestation in these games. Just remove the time savers, leave the game at the length that it is, the quality is already there. 
no time saver was even, in my opinion, having progressed through the points where I felt like I needed time savers, the time savers were just not even worth it. If you look at the calculation, I didn't buy any, but I thought, I said, you know, if you do these side missions and you get the XP that you need, the time saver is only going to level you up, but you're going to be left behind with crappy gear and miss out on the opportunity to be able to farm good items at your level. So if you maybe get a time saver that boosts you, then you go back and try to do a lower level mission. You're going to get gear on either that lower level or gear that is two to three levels higher than you. So you're in a conundrum. Use crappy low level gear or just level up with the progression in a natural sense. And so that is the big, in my opinion, elephant in the room. And somebody has got to call that out. And, you know, it's going to probably show up in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This video is not going to change anybody's mind, but it's going to show up. If it will show up, I guess I said probably. So I don't know for sure. I haven't seen Valhalla. No, no, I don't. I haven't played the game. But it's interesting that they decided to take that approach. I think they need to remove their microtransactions from their Assassin's Creed games. And don't get me wrong, they've been putting them in old games, even though it was like, yeah, you know, I'm of the, I'll buy the game and I don't buy microtransactions. I know, fight me. But that's basically my gripe with the game. Other aspects of the game and other things about the game were the writing. I think the writing for Assassin's Creed Odyssey was very strong. Whoever came up with that story and that narrative to make, uh, you know, a fictional game that basically mirrored and resembled some historic events, they did a very good job. The game checks off all the boxes and actually does it in a natural way, so it's not like you're checking off the boxes. I remember when Assassin's Creed Valhalla's marketing came out, there were you know, these people that, was, that were trying to raise up some, some dirt, saying, oh, there are no female characters. This made me really suspicious of people who put out that critique because having played the game, I had to go back and say, first of all, a lot of these people that say these things do not know history and don't care about history. Because if they will look at their history, they'll find out that it was Jade Raymond, a lady who led the team to bring the first Assassin's Creed game to the market. And then if they did play their games, they would realize that not only is there a male and a female option in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, there are actually strong characters that are female that the game really does center around. I wish I could spoil it for you, but that would really take away things. You get in there, you won't even realize until maybe hours dealing with these characters that, oh my goodness, these are these are historical characters that were loved or not you know of notoriety in their time in some cases, and in some cases, just fictional characters that are well-written and natural. They're not forced down your throat. And I don't think a lot of the people who were saying these things even played the game to that length. I'm not trying to, you know, stir up some controversy. I just have to say it how I see it. Having plowed through hours and hours of this game, it just seems like those people aren't gamers. And I play video games in multiple communities, and I've seen some real dedicated, hardcore female and lady gamers that will literally play the video games and make anybody that comes their way look like dirt. I play games in the fighting game community. I know girls that will rinse your entire existence if you ever step into the arena with them because they are dedicated to the work and the practice that it takes. And so I think this fakery and the mobbishness needs to just stay away from a lot of these games. And the game should be critiqued based on the merits and even the faults for them. So whoever the producer of Assassin's Creed was, uh, you know, I think I can't remember his name right now. And I think he's the same guy that's going to be the main producer for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I think he may just have won over a fan into the Assassin's Creed franchise. And this is somebody who has almost all the Assassin's Creed games that has never played any of them past 45 minutes or an hour max. Odyssey was the formula that was needed to bring in a new and fresh blood, fresh insight into the community. And I think that insight and I think that strategy is actually working I mean even if it's not really working on a wider range it at least has worked for me and even some other people that I you know I do know personally and as I've been talking about it and hinting about it in my videos I've seen some of you make allusions saying man this game is that the game is actually quite refreshing yes it could be tasking some people have called it overrated but if you're somebody who has never played an Assassin's Creed game before this game does not leave you in the dirt because the story is entirely and highly removed from all the other Assassin's Creed franchises and history 
that you are basically fine to just go in and start all over again. The, you know, because the Assassin's Creed games had been centered around a specific power group. They redesigned and rewrote another power group for you to be able to fight against and even had the boldness and audacity, man, you know, in a good way to tie it into one of the more, you know, I would say beloved Greek, Greek world, uh, you know, hero stories. And that's the story of Leonidas. So they call him Leonidas. Uh, you know, apparently that's the that's the pronunciation that they used in the game because Ubisoft spends time doing history and a lot of things that they were saying and pronouncing. I was like, I would not have pronounced Leonidas, you know, or Leonidas, Leonidas, you know. So that was quite interesting to see so far, 40 hours into the game, peeling different layers of the game apart, uh, you know, checking out different aspects and learning the systems in the game. And to be honest, I feel like my learning is still insufficient. I may have to double this time that I've invested into the game to be able to get a full and better grasp of what Assassin's Creed, you know, in its new format is actually offering. And that is exciting to know that while this learning process is going on, a new Assassin's Creed game is brewing on the horizon. I feel like if you want to jump into a franchise, if you have the time and the investment, you can take an old, uh, you know, if the franchise is continuing, you can go to an older version of the franchise and start chewing your way through what that franchise really is about. And I like the fact that they allowed for people to be able to jump in everywhere. And I hope they do the same thing for Valhalla. That way, if people say, you know, I don't want to spend the time playing, you know, Odyssey right now. I would rather invest it into a new game that they can jump into that new game and experience, you know, a lot of the that game and the systems and how fresh it is. I mean, there's nothing really that you can say, you know, plagues this game other than the microtransactions uh, and a few things that could be repetitive. But when it comes to story plot, uh, when it comes to, you know, the game tying in so many things at the same time, it really does make a lot of sense to be very honest how they've actually put it together. So thumbs up on the team that has been working on this. Um, yeah, you guys, you know, I know corporate two has its agenda. I know those microtransactions. If people really had their way on the development side, many of them will probably not want it to be in the game because they would prefer that the art just be enjoyed in its pure form. But nonetheless, it is what it is. Thank you very much for your time and audience. I'll be bringing you guys hopefully more Assassin's Creed content as we go on. It'll be quite minimal, but we'll see how it works, um, you know, as well. But not leaving the Division 2 content. It's just nice to be able to get some fresh air and play something else. Literally, fresh air. That It's like an open world. You will get fresh air and bring you guys some other content as well. So thanks once again for your time and audience. I appreciate you guys. Peace.